Welcome to another ICE webinar. My name is Emmanuel Cano. I'm security consulting engineer, and today I want to talk to you about device administration with ICE. Even though we uh, might think that we can achieve device administration using TACAX, well, there are a couple of considerations, couple of options that we also have while we are thinking about device administration, even using radios. And I think that's one of the most important part to show today. Today, and that's why I decided to start with the very basic of TACAX. Um, part of the also cover difference between TACAX and radios. I think this is important to better understand how much we can do between TACAX and radios for device administration. Again, we are going to um, have an overview of radios, have an overview of TACAX, what are its elements, and we will also be talking about single and we are going to have a couple of demos um, showing you how to achieve TACAX server with using external eyes. In my case, it's going to be eyes, but you can pretty much use any other server. And fine, but last but not least, we could be using TACAX with Duo. For sure, these two points we're going to cover in details using demo so that you can see how easy it is to configure, how you can troubleshoot, and what are the elements for each one of them. Uh, let's just start with the basic of TACAX. And before we even talk about TACAX as a protocol, and talk about ICE as our um, main TACAX server. Let's take a look at how it was uh, used, or what were the options that we had in the past using um, radios and CLI access. So in the past, we had something called role-based CLS access, also known as parser view. And what we had to do as network administrators was to configure what we call a view so that we can use the commands and restrict the commands per user. Even though it was functional um, by restricting the particular user or users using specific commands, like I have it on my example in the console, it comes to the uh, scalability and the way that we had to configure was one by one. So that was one of the main um, challenges that we had to face as administrators. So configuring one by one was very time consuming and that could also lead on not a scalable solution. So even though we can use it, it was time consuming and it was not the best option for us. Fortunately, after uh, um, some time, we came across with terminal access control access control system plus or TACAX for short. This is one of the most used protocols for our um, network administrators and for our customers to um, uh, to manage devices and to who is going to get access to which device for Cisco and even for third party. For those who don't know, we can also use TACAX, we can also use Reduce for devices who are not part of Cisco. That, that's incredibly useful. But before getting into the details, let's talk about references and the main considerations while we need to choose Reduce versus TACAX for device admin. This is very, um, very traditional uh, slide where we used to see what are the ports, what are the um, the encryption methods, but essentially tells us what are the main options or what are the main considerations to take into account every time that we need to use port, um, sorry, a combined authentication or authorization, which is the case of Reduce, or if we really need to separate authentication, authorization, and accounting, then we choose TACA for purpose. We also have encryption differences. While Reduce could encrypt only the password, on TACAX, we have the ability to encrypt the entire body of the packet. TACAX protocol believes um, of behaves quite different. That's why 
most of the cases we need to uh, we should use DACAS for that. The main difference, as stated in the last um, the, the last row, we can see the command authorization. For many of our search network and um, users, network users who are going to get access to the network and to network devices. We need to keep in mind, we can also restrict which type of commands we are going to use or which type of commands every single person was going to get access to the network we'll be using. And that's entirely possible using TACAX, while on Radius, we can allow the user to get into the network or the network device as such, but we are limited to allow only permit all or deny because we don't have the granularity as with TACAX. So talking about device administration with uh, Radius, which is the, the first option that we used to have, and it would say some of the customers and some of the solutions still using it. Basically, when we talk about demo uh, device administration with Radius, we need to think and we need to consider three main points. The first point uh, relies on the verification of the network device to supervise. Radius is widely adopted. It's widely supported by many network devices, Cisco and third party. And it is important for us to start looking at the dictionaries, start looking at the attributes that we may use in order to use Radius or to configure Radius for device administration. First, uh, second, we have to create what we call the authorization profile, which is um, basically the set of permissions that we are going to send upon the authentication and upon on a um, authorization part. And here we have the ability to create the user, also user role and the privilege along with the vendor attributes. As I mentioned, Redius supports uh, Cisco and third party devices. And that's why we need to consider the dictionaries and the attributes that we need to send. If for some reason we don't send the correct attribute, then it's not going to be possible to, um, to have access to the network device. This is important to remember. Last but not least, after we created the authorization part, it's time for us to create the ICE policy sets, the authentication, and for sure the authorization policy. All of this can be done under the radius policy section. And after that, we can uh, configure the network device as we are doing normal um, ICE and configuration for AAA. One of the advantages, and I think this is very important for ICE and for many of us who are working with ICE every single day, one of the advantages that ICE provides is the ability to not only have um, support for Cisco devices, but also to uh, to uh, manage other um, vendors' devices. In addition, we also have the ability to configure uh, network devices, not only for CLI, but user interface. For example, we can configure A5 to be able to send the traffic request to I. And by using the correct attributes, we can limit the user or the administrator to certain uh, menus and certain types. Or in, on the other side, we can have Huawei devices, for example, just um, authenticating against our device and have the specific permissions based on what we have configured. Nice. Another example, um, we can use Uniper. Again, using attributes on their authorization profile, we can set up and we can define what type of the permission this administration will have. And last but not least, we could have Cisco. There are some solutions for Cisco that could not support TACAX at the moment, but we can still be able to authenticate the users via externally using ICE again, using advanced attributes. In this example, this 
um, device, it's a firewall device. It can be authenticated and we can um, externally authenticate the user by the Cisco AB per. One point to discuss, one point to consider is that with every single attribute, we need to review and we need to double check the document for all the vendor or for the vendor that we want eyes to authenticate with. That's all I wanted to talk about device administration with TACAX, sorry, with Redius. Let's talk about now uh, device administration with TACAX, which is now the, the preferred method, the granularity, the flexibility, and the security that this protocol provides. And under TACAX, we need to understand the three main or the three pillars for the configuration. Being the first one, the allow protocols, which means what are the protocol also we are going to support in order to receive and to handle the request. By default, we can use allow PAPAS key, but we can also use allow CHAP or MHA version one. It is important for us to understand that even if we can enable it and I support it, those roles are not here, especially MS chat version one. So we need to uh, consider to migrate to support protocols. Okay. Chat is also well used, but then again, we need to consider it, uh, only use the preferred one, which is pop ASCII and review the um, the commands and the documentation for the network device. We also have the command set. In this case, we are allowing or we are denying the network admin to type any specific or a set of a specific commands. The command set can um, permit, for example, the configuration terminal while denying the rest of the configuration. We have this granularity on TACAX, and even though we set up the permission for the network administrator to be um, uh, privilege 15, which is the highest level, still a support, we can still limit the commands that this network administrator could type. One additional option, and this is a very cool option for ICE, is that we can use regex. So if we don't know, if we don't want to eliminate or to limit specific commands, or just restrict for a specific set of commands, we can also use regex. And we are going to see this in one of the demos actually. And last but not least, we also need to think about shell profile. With shell profile, as we can see on the, um, on the image, we can provide the network administrator with the privilege upon the authentication and as part of the authorization part. We can um, set up the privilege based on the role. For example, if we want to differentiate between network operator versus network admin or super admin, and we can have a mix of shell file and command. We can have one user with 15 or the privilege of 15 but we can restrict, restrict this endpoint or this network device and network administrator to manage this device only with certain commands. Okay. With regards of our network uh, TACAX or the TACAX that we need to keep into consideration, we need to for sure enable the device admin service one of the main problems when we start talking about when we start implementing TACAX is the ability to um, receive the request, process the request, and send this specific permission or this specific privilege. Before we start with the testing phase, we need to make sure that this service under administrator administration system deployment is enabled. Otherwise, we are not going to have any response back from ICE. Second part that we need to consider is that we need to have enough licenses to be able to perform device administration. And the way that we are going to identify 
and make sure we have the license is by going to nav administration system, but in, we are going to need to click on licensing menu. Let's remember that beginning and starting on ICE 3.0, we are going to need to register our ICE with the smart licensing. This does not support path file anymore. So once we register our ICE, we should see our device administration as one, depending on the number of nodes. In my case, I'm only using one node, hence the only one node, it's uh, only one license is needed as of now. This is from ICE perspective. What about the network device itself? Well, in my case, I'm going to use ASA and um, a router for my demos. And I wanted to show you the basic configuration that I'm going to use today in order to configure ASA for device administration for, with ICE. And I will want to start with the command or the reload, which is in my opinion, you know, the best practice or the quick tip, I will, I will, um, I will tell you, and I will, I will always um, recommend to my customers. What the reload command does is to set up the time in minutes. In my case, fifteen minutes. And if for some reason I lose connectivity or lose access to the device, even though I'm not configured all the commands i'm not saving the commands when the command this command will save me by reload the device in the certain time that i've set up in case my case 15 minutes but it can be like five minutes five minutes okay there's going to be another option that i'm going to talk about in the next slide but for now we have configured or we should configure the global configure this command in global mode and then continue with adding the ice um, using the interface so we should be receiving we should be sending the information in case of the attack access request and we need to make sure that we enable um, local uh, sorry, uh, authentication for SSH or for console another tip that I could give you is that before Starting with the author bar, you have the ability to test authentication. If the authentication fails, then that means that it, the authorization will fail as well. So before going to authorization commands, I recommend you to use the command test triple A authentication number uh, or the uh, the name of the, the S group, and just type any user that you could also use to test um, the connectivity and to test the authentication path for ICE before moving on to authorization part. Here is the configuration. This is the configuration I'm going to use on my demo, but I wanted to show you how we see and how many commands do we need to set up our ASA for device admin. Um, yes, in this case, when it comes to iOS, well, we have a little bit more of commands However, the configuration looks pretty similar. We also have the ability to enable the load command. Again, 15 minutes is my, my time, but you could set it up as 10, 5, or any time that you prefer. We need to add as a stack act server, add a AAA and then authentication commands. Another tip that was um, that I think it's also useful and was was provided by was provided to me and I think it's very, very good idea. Um, instead of pointing the TACAX authentic or the authentication commands to ICE group first, we can also use local as the first list to be um, to be used for the authentication. That way we can um, test the authentication and if that then we can move to uh, the group from local to ICE. Okay, that's another tip, and for sure, all the best practices um, and all these commands will serve to uh, to test before implement this in production. Okay, as with say we have so commands. In my case, I'm using uh, the line BTY, but also you can 
implement this on the console, we need to have the authorization commands. And the reason why I'm using those authorization commands at the end is because as soon as you implement the authorization commands, uh, these requests will be sent to ICE. So configure ICE um, with the specific permissions for this user, you may need uh, or you might not be able to continue with the configuration. And again, before configure anything on production or before configure the authorization commands, you can use your um, good friend test trip group to test everything against ICE in uh, real time. So this is um, pretty much what I'm going to use in my demo, as I said, and many of us have worked or will be working to set up not only one iOS or not only one AS say time. We are going to, or we need to think about different options when we comes to configuring different um, iOS or different uh, devices. And every single request will be sent to us uh, as part of the granularity, as I said at the beginning of the presentation. That means that every single request will um, will be logged and will be shown in the TACAX, um, TACAX live blocks. So we need to think about the amount of information we'll be getting to us as part of the TACAX configuration. One of the options that we have in order to improve the performance comes to the connection between ICE and the network devices is something called a single connect. So single connect is one of the features that allows us to um, group the one of the authentication, for example, one the login and different messages in a single three-way handshake. In this case, um, we can have a look at the three-way handshake login. Then we have the login. We have another three-way handshake just for the authentication and so on, so on. In this case, every time that we interact with the device and sending traffic to TACAX, which means ICE, uh, are going to see the three-way handshake. So basically single connect allows us to use a single TCP connections for all TACAX communication between ICE and the network device. Here is how it looks like after we enable this feature. So basically, the number of three way I check, okay? And this is also um, improving uh, the performance as such. Just another example, we are using a three-way handshake with authentication, in this case for command command authentication and another set of three-way handshake with accounting command authentication. Sorry, the accounting command. In this case, by using single connect, we are also allowing this use uh, this part um, of the three-way handshake to be set it up and to stick in one single three-way handshake uh, communication. By, by every transaction instead of have one three one high check per command. Okay, how we set it up, how we configure it, it's just um, by using two different com configuration. In this case, with ICE, and one important part is that uh, we have a single connect support enabled by default, starting on ICE two hundred six and above. So. If you have a look at single connect support located on the War Center device administration settings, here you will gonna see the single connect support already enabled it. Uh, on the other side, once we are once we configure this um, on our network devices, we have the ability to enable singles uh, single connect mode on network resources network devices. Even though this is um, a pretty uh, stiff, uh, stiff forward process, we also need to enable it from the network device as well. So here is the command. This is um, in this case on a router, but you can also enable it on the switch. And the way that we enable it is by using the TACAC server, which means inside the TACAC server or the, while we are configuring um, ICE, and adding the ICE IP address, we can enable this single connect connection. Okay. 
my advice and according to what the different um, um, different tests and with my very my experience with our customers, I always recommend to test this in a different scenarios, different devices, and for sure it's always recommended to test this in the lab before going to production. But again, this is one of the features that we can use and we can take advantage while we are configuring TACAX. Okay. Talk TACAX, we have our first um, option and the first option for TACAX in this case is something called external TACAX server. So in this case, what I'm using here is um, one of the scenarios when one a customer would like to migrate from one arise while keep both of them online. Here is one of the best options that I could provide or we can test. You can also test in, in your environment. In this case, I'm using two eyes, okay? One being the proxy for the second one. And we need to enable basically, or we need to consider basically three pillars. The first pillar is that the network access device will need to be registered on eyes one only, okay? or the part of the communication that will occur between ICE1 and ICE2, we go directly to ICE2 by adding ICE1 as network access device, okay? In my case, ICE1 will be on ICE2, and ICE2 will be registered or will join the Active Directory. The Active Directory will not be joined on ICE2, I'm sorry, on ICE1, but will be on ICE2. And the communication back will be the same being uh, the Active Directory will send the traffic to ICE2 to so will communicate with ICE1 and ICE1 will provide this information on the privilege or the access accept access reject to the network device. As simple as that. In my case, I'm going to use ICE 3.3 and ICE 3.2, okay, to show you how easy it is to configure um, using ICE TAGX server. Okay, um, here's my lab. It's a simple, simple um, Active Directory. And here I'm going to use ASA and one of the users that I've created previously to show you here. As you can see, I wanted to show you again a very, um, from scratch, very simple step. Here I have my um, my user part of the Active Directory, and I'm going to use Active Directory join into the um, direct in my environment. So here's my eyes 3.3, so pretty new. I'm using dark, uh, dark mode. I really love that mode, by the way. And the first thing that I'm going to set up is the network um, network device group. So it's a best practice for me in order to test specific devices. And here I'm going to use uh, the network device as firewall because I'm going to use a, 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 a. Next step is um, using a network devices menu to add my ASA. Okay, I'm typing the IP address and I'm going to enable TACAX. Okay, please make sure that you record the uh, shared secret because you are, you are going to need to type the same shared secret on, on the ASA. Oh, one more thing, don't forget to add the ASA on the network device group. In this case, the network device type as firewalls, and we are pretty much it. So as of now, we are adding the network access device on a on ICE number one, okay? And next is to configure the external server. So the external server, we, it will be ICE number two, and here we are going to need to type or to define a name. Okay, ICE external in my case, I'm going to type ICE number two IP address. Okay, when I'm going to leave the command connection port and times default, set it up the share secret, and that's it. Okay, that's for setting up and to define the external server. Then I need to go to TACAC server sequence. In this case, it's going to be uh, the list of the servers, the external servers, ICE1 will uh, look into it. 
since I only have one, well, I'm going to be um, be able to only add one. Here's the important part. We have local accounting and remote accounting. In this case, I'm enabling local and remote so that you can see the TACAX logs in both eyes, eyes one and eyes the next step is to configure a policy set, but rather than configure it, um, the, the profiles and the command set, I'm going to use the policy set to redirect the traffic to my ICE number two. Okay, everything that I've configured so far belongs to ICE uh, number one. So, and in this case, I'm going to use the device type of firewalls that I previously configured and use the sequence Okay, proxy sequence, which is tagx underscore sequence from the menu. In this case, I'm going to use um, 3.2 as my um, ice number two, but it will it should work the same with uh, ice number, uh, ice version 3.3. Okay, as we saw on the slide, in this case, I'm going to use um, ice number one as my network access device, hence I need to add it. I'm not going to add my switch or my router, in this case, my ASA, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use ice number one as my network access device. I'll make sure to copy and paste the same IP address so I don't make any mistake here. And I'm going to enable, okay? I'll need to enable TACAX as well, okay? Let's see if I have the same um, IP address. Go to TACAX. Good. And type the same the same shared secret that I defined previously while I was configured external TACAX server on ICE number one. Okay, that's it. And after that, I think we, we can um, we can go directly to the um, let's see. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you that in my case, ICE number two is already joined. Okay, it has a con so sexual connectivity with my Active Directory, the on prem Active Directory, and I fetch the two groups that I'm going to use, especially one of them for my ASA user. Okay, I'll go to the external identity service. Okay, and as we can see, this active directory this ice is not joined with active directory only act, um, ice number two right the next part is to configure the tacax elements here i'm going to use two um elements that we previously saw this is tacax command set and tacax profile in tacax command set i'm going to use very a mainful name in my case asa because we are going to use for asa and I'm going to click on permit any command that is not listed below. This option will allow me to type any command and all the commands will be permitted. Next, I'm going to use uh, Taka's profile. And as mentioned previously, I'm going to use default privilege as 15. That means that I'm going to get the privilege 15 and I'm going to have all the permission for all the commands. Commands. Okay, um, I'm configuring policy set in this section, and I'm gonna use um, one of the condi conditions, which is um, the TACAX. Um, or oh, well, let's let's configure a different thing. Let me configure the IP address. Okay, so you can see that it also work with IP address. So in this case, I'm not configuring the IP address from the ASA as such, I'm configuring the IP address of ICE number one. Again, everything um, in regards to the communication will be between ICE one and ICE two. Okay. For the authentication part, I'm gonna use the same, I'm gonna use something by default. Here, I don't have, um, I don't have any, any specific um, option to configure, but under authorization, I'm going to use one external AD group, in this case, the user. Okay. And I'm going to select the command set and the shell profile and configure it in the elements section. Okay. Good. I think that's it. Next step is to 
monitor and to test this configuration with my ASA. So here, um, I'm going to put it uh, options, the red, the tackle slide logs on ice one and ice two. So you see the same log in both eyes. And now it's time to, for me to configure the ASA. So I just see on the right side, the commands that I have is pretty much the same set of commands that I put on the slides. So this is the best way for me to show you that this command actually worked. Okay. And before configuring, I just want to show you that um, we are going to start from scratch by typing the reload. So as I mentioned, we need to enable it in global configuration mode, and that it's going to give us 15 minutes to configure it. Okay. So then let's uh, go ahead. Let's continue by configuring ICE. Okay. Share secret. Remember, we need to make sure that this same share secret we configure on ASA. It needs to be configured on ICE, right? Before continuing with the configuration, let's test our username. In this case, I put my user as ASA user. The authentication is successful, okay? And we are going to see both authentication, okay? It's coming on ASA, sorry, on ICE number one, and the same should be on ICE number two as we see it, okay? This option is for us to, um, to confirm that the configuration comes to ICE1 and from ICE1 to ICE2. And we, are, we can also confirm that um, the, the communication is going from one to two and it's forwarding the request from ICE1 to two, right? So let's go here. And I think it's, it's good enough that we can configure it and in this case, I'm using the no AAA authentication SSH console because I previously configured the SSH to authenticate against local, the local database. So if this is your case, then we need to remove that one before configure the AAA authentication SSH to point to ICE instead of um, the local authentication, okay? So let's continue with it. And let me see if I can remove it, uh, this one here, and configure the authentication, okay? And triple, add the AAA commands to point to ICE for authorization part, okay? That's it. And at this moment, we are going to test our user one more time, setting up a different SSH session okay, using ASA user one and put the same credentials in there. Okay. And we should be able to see both authentications on both eyes. Okay. One thing to note is that if we don't want to see the logs on both eyes, it's important for us to disable the option to only show the accounting information on the second ICE of the remote uh, server instead of the local server. Okay? I just did it uh, for both, so you can see the both lo logs on both ICE, but it, this is entirely optional for you. Okay, that's the first demo I wanted to show you. Then, um, Let's go to the next demo. And I think this is pretty interesting and pretty um, something that we have seen in our teams and something that we um, we are looking for, we should looking for. In this case, the TACAX we do for multi-factor authentication is something that it's possible for now and something that is very easy to configure. Um, and for, the different users that we should have access to, the different network administrators, all the administrators should have access to one or more network devices. However, it is important to implement an additional um, authentication method apart from username and password, even though we are um, using Active Directory credentials. And 
one of the best options to use we call TACAX with Duo for MFA. It is um, a scenario I'm using uh, Ubuntu. I'm not using Windows because I'm, I wanted to show you how easy it is to configure the Ubuntu as uh, the Duo proxy, okay? And this Duo authentication proxy will be used against the the cloud, uh, cloud service duo so that it can communicate and again the dual authentication proxy will also be in communication with the active directory so here is pretty much the communication and the goal is to provide the username uh, with the ability to authenticate with username and password but also to implement or to enhance the security by adding a additional authentication layer um, but in this case, I didn't want to go over the theory. Rather, I wanted to show you directly on the demo because I believe this is very important for us to understand. And in this case, I'm back to my Active Directory. Okay, and one of the options, one of the first point that I want to show you is that I created one user specifically to integrate my authentication proxy using Ubuntu with the Active Directory. So I could also use any other user, but for the service account, I decided to configure this user called Duo. Okay, I type an email, okay? And I created a test user, which is called Emmanuel, okay? As you can see here, but in, essentially it's Emmanuel. I configured, um, email and this Emmanuel, this user belongs to domain user group and a new group I created called Duo group. Okay. This is in order to, for me to align with the best practices to not mix different users. And I wanted to have this as clean as possible. On the other side, looking at my dashboard for Duo. Okay. This is how the Duo dashboard looked like we need to start our configuration by using or by choosing the um, application with ice or ice as application so um here here i want to show you have already configured but if we want to configure one application to protect using your duo we can just type in this case duo so please consider or make sure that you choose Cisco is dual rather than Cisco administration. Cisco is administration. It's a different thing. Here we are going to have the integration shared secret AI, which will be used later while we are integrated uh, with um, the authentication proxy. Okay? And the rest of the configuration, I decided to leave it as it is to show you the very basic setup for me. Right? Okay. Next step is to go to uh, directory in this case i'm going to use um, my active directory and i will integrate it with my authentication proxy okay and for sure it will be integrated by dual cloud so i had to add my ip address for my active directory so it's an active directory ip address that should be reached uh, to um to act to dual and using uh, LDAP information, which is 4389, okay? The rest of the configuration here, at least for testing purpose, it's completely the default one. And you can always test the connection between Active Directory and Duo by, um, by the, uh, the click on test on the portal, okay? If you see any other sign rather than connected, that means that something was wrong and you need to troubleshoot properly. Okay. If everything goes well, which is in my case, I should be able to see uh, the user, especially on using my user group. Okay. Here is my case. I'm using this uh, specific user, which is Emmanuel, right? It's Emmanuel and I'm also be able to see the email and, and the group that I use to sync with which is um, dual group. Right? So let's see what else is needed. Um, okay, I want to show you what is the current status that should get 
when you are configuring Duo with Active Directory. Okay, most of the documentation is uh, pointing to the five. Um, everything about this option, about this section, should be already configured. So I went ahead and show you what are the menus and what are the fields that you need to make sure to fill out in order to get the connectivity up and running. Okay, so nothing about that. The main point is to have eyes as an application and second part of the configuration belongs to dual configuration file. As I said, we can also use Microsoft Windows, um, but in my uh, setup in my lab, I wanted to show you how to configure it using Ubuntu, which is a base uh, server. Okay? Uh, don't worry if you don't see many of these commands. I'm going to paste this uh, template um, on my GitHub repository so that you can review it by your own and copy and paste and for sure modify with your own data from Duo. But I want to show you what are the current information that we need to look at every time that we need to integrate Duo with our Active Directory and on ICE. So here we have the service account username password. So you see there you have the AD client, hence we have the IP address. We also have the username and password I use to integrate with my app directory. That specific section belongs to the configuration with ICE. So here I'm using ICE IP address and the right use share secret, which is the one I'm also use in ICE in a moment. So the integration key and the share key is exactly what I need to use to copy paste it, as you can see here, and that should be all. So now we are ready to configure ICE, and ICE is going to be over external identity sources and under reduce token. So here I'm already configured it, but I want to show you how how it is to set it. Just need to add on the new reduce token. Click on connection, and first of all, you need to add the authentication proxy IP address. There is no need for me to configure the Active Directory IP address, but we need to connect to ICE with the uh, authentication. That's why I put it the IP address and set it up the shared secret. The rest of the configuration, I decided to leave it as it is. No changes on the authentication, no changes on the authorization part. Okay, this is um, enabled by default, and I decided to put it uh, or to leave it. The next um, section is to create a new identity source sequence. Here it's going to be um, the way that we are going to use. In my case, I decided to call it dual identity source sequence and select dual as first and my active directory as second. Then just click on save. I didn't change anything on the, um, the options. Just save and that's it. Okay, so far so good. Uh, in my case, I think the next step could be to um, review. Oh, this is very important. I, during my configuration, I faced of issues while I was trying to connect the proxy out with my Active Directory. So please make sure and please double check that the, uh, the dual security service is allowed on the Active Directory firewall. If you don't see or if this is not allowed, you won't connect your proxy with your Active Directory. So please be careful on that. All right. Um, once we have the identity source sequence, it's time to configure um, the command set and tagx profile. In this case, I'm not going to use my ASA, but I'm going to use my um, reduce. I'm sorry, my uh, router. So here again, I'm using privilege 15. The reason I choose or I've chosen privilege 15 is because I want to show you that even though we have the, the highest level we are able to restrict the commands. So in my case, these are commands and only these commands will be allowed for the network administrator to type. 
we have regex which is the second one you have shop running config and i'm going to keep this option as disable that means that if there is any other command that is not in the list it's not going to be yellow right and last but not least in my case i've configured my router this is the ip address and for sure you can also use network device group or any other uh, method in my case i want to keep it simple and under authentication policy it is important to configure the identity source sequence in my case it was dual and under authorization well i'm just adding the webinar command set and webinar profile as we did it with asa right that's pretty much it on tacax well we are we are done so let me just put it here and select every 10 minutes, right? So we have dual configuration. We have a TACAX ICE configuration done. And well, we are almost done here, okay? The last part that is missing is to configure router. So let's go ahead and do it. So CSR, this is my CSR virtual router, okay? And let's see um, if we need to configure anything. I don't think so. Let's, I think we can go ahead and use my PC. Okay, this is the PC that I'm going to use to test the connectivity and to test TACAX once we are done with the configuration. So let me just log in into it. Okay, um, let me refresh this. Well, let's remove it. Just, it's easier for me. So, go to putty and okay we are ready to test in a moment for sure right so in this case i'm going to use this um configuration right so it's going to be the um the same command it's going to um, allow us 15 minutes to configure before it gets reloaded right and i'm going to configure on a, i'm going to continue with the rest of the configuration as we did it with ASA. So the way I'm configuring is the method that I always, almost always use with my customers to keep in a safe place. So I'm, I'm going to need in terms of time, I'm going to need to speed this up. This is the configuration pretty much. Okay. Authentication, authorization, and the rest of the commands are pretty much now. Again, this configuration template will be on my GitHub repository so that you can have it as reference and play a little bit, okay? It's time for me to test. And this is a very useful command that I always recommend you to test or to use whenever possible. This is um, the command that allows you to, that will allow you to troubleshoot and to see what's going on behind the scenes every time that you test tool. So again, I'm going to add it in my template on my GitHub repository, but basically what I'm going to do is to test and to see if there is something behind the scenes that could tell me if the authentication will work or not. Okay. So let me go ahead, go to 14. Let me make it a little bit bigger so we can all see. And what is going to happen is after I type my username and my password, it's uh, Duo will prompt me for my push on Duo on my phone. And after that, it should be all, and I should be able to get into the device, okay? So uh, the first time didn't try, I think I had fat fingers at that time. So let me try one more time. If you see that the time is like um, a waiting time, that means that it has been processed. And after that, you will see the push as I see it. I put it, um, one example, and there you go. Here we have a bunch of information. We have communication between between um, Duo, between the uh, pro authentication proxy, ICE, this is ICE IP address. And well, here you will see all the logs as you were troubleshooting an issue. So here's pretty much it, okay? And let me, um speeded this up a little bit i wanted to show you one more thing this is um the show commands as we remember show commands was part of 
the show sorry the show running was part of the allow commands and we are using this one but the important command i want to show you here let me see if i can speed this up a little bit uh see here commands okay it's the um okay this one router and ergrp so if we don't have the router space ergrp we should be able to use router command okay and this routed command will also give us the ability to configure any routing protocol such as ospf bgp and most of the times we this might not be useful for the network administrators so one of the options to um to restrict this is by using regex as i'm doing here so in this case i'm using router space ergrp okay give it just a name sorry a number 100 and it allowed me to do so so it's it's pretty much it and if i type for example router ospf 100 it doesn't allow me to do so and the reason for that is because of the regex command okay so if we back we are back to ice okay we are seeing uh one successful attempt for router ergrp 100 and an authentication failure for OSPF. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So here we are not only seeing the um, the option for dual for network device administration, but we also seen how we can use regex to restrict certain commands while allowing the rest of them. And I didn't want to finish my presentation without showing this very important slide. We have seen many questions around many questions around this topic. This topic is basically TACAX with Azure ID. Many of our customers, many of us have been migrating or we are planning to migrate into it um, and planning the migration with um, Azure ID. So here is an important slide that I encourage you to keep it handy because it will save a lot of time if you want to configure eyes. So in this case, um, the takeaway is that uh, the Azure MFA does not support radius, which means we need to use um, TACACs, for example, between the network device and ICE. We need to use radius between ICE and Microsoft NPS. And here is how we are going to configure. We are going to be able to use the Azure AD groups and Azure MFA for uh, network device administration. So here is very important point and every time that you are think or if any of your customers are looking for uh, an option to integrate ICE, TACAX and network devices along with Azure and Azure MFA, well, this is the way to go. And that's it. Um, Rigo, I'm not sure if there's any question I might help to answer. Yeah, thanks, Emmanuel. Uh, great presentation there. Uh, I think we do have time to squeeze in maybe one, maybe two questions from our audience here. Uh, and uh, let's see, I'm looking at our Q&A panel, and I got this question here. Um, how often does the test user get called? Uh, it would seem that either fill up to either fill up my logs with failures or have hard coded credentials saved in the config. Is this the recommended configuration? Oh, okay. Um, I just want to know, I just want to uh, confirm I understood the question correctly. How often, how often does the username credentials be pulled? Is that, is that the question, Rico? Uh, I believe so. Um, the, the question itself didn't really specify, I just mentioned how often does a test user get called? Um, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, let me try to answer this one very, very quickly. So every time that we need to log in into TACAX, uh, sorry, into network device for TACAX, this is where we are going to see um, when the network device will prompt us for the user credentials, so for the, for the user information. So after we have um, TACAX session, 
we should not see any um, user um, information, but we should start seeing um, command authorization. Every time that we type any command on the network device, we should see the logs on TACAX live logs and see what are the commands that the user who is already authenticated is trying to type. I think that answers the question, Drew. Perfect, thank you so much. And uh, final question here, does TACAX with Duo also authenticate against Azure AD? Does TACAX, I don't know. Oh, well, it's, it's also, uh, um, from my understanding, it's also possible. I would like to um, share the information, more information in my GitHub repository. But I think to see um, it is possible instead of using MFA for Azure, we can use uh, Duo for that purpose. Uh, I think that that's possible.